So the scaling laws, if you do a graph and you try to measure error or inaccuracy, so this is a bad thing, log loss is the technical term. If you try to measure how much it's still failing to understand about English text, as you increase the amount of compute that went into training it. So they have these laws or the empirical regularities. Every time you want to halve the amount of this error that's remaining, you have to put in a million times as much compute. That's what it fundamentally comes down to. And that's pretty extreme, right? So they have halved it and they did put in a million times as much compute. But if you want to halve it again, you need a million times more compute. And then if you want to halve it another time, probably it's game over. And at least on, in terms of that particular metric, I would say that is quite bad scaling. And these are the scaling laws. They show that there's a particular measure of how good it's doing and, and how much kind of error remains. And it, it does hold over many different orders of magnitude. But the actual thing that's holding is what I would have thought of as a, a pretty bad scaling relationship. If you ask people before they saw the laws, what would you hope happens? How much extra compute would you need to put in to, to halve the error? I think they would have said something less than a million times as <laughs> yeah, much. And then if you said, well, actually, it's a million times as much, they would have thought, oh, OK, that's actually unimpressive. How then have we been managing to make so much progress? So when most people saw this type of thing, they would have thought, oh, so in order to get good performance on this task, you would need to run an experiment larger than any experiment that's ever been run in any computer science department ever. And they would then rule it out. Whereas the pioneers of scaling thought, oh, but that wouldn't be that much money for a company. In some sense, all you had to do then was this work of just making this existing thing bigger. You didn't have to come up with any new ideas. And then the other thing that's turned out to, to make it have big impacts in the world is that for every million fold increase in the compute of setting up these models, we've seen spectacular improvements in the capabilities as felt by an individual. So, so a way to look at this is that the shift from GPD 2 to 3 used 70 times as much compute and going from 3 to 4 used about 70 times as much again. And GPT-3 felt worlds away from 2, and 4 felt a real improvement as well. You really felt it in both cases. A visceral feeling of, wow. This is suddenly useful. Yeah, this yeah. is qualitatively better. That said, you'd probably hope that that was true if someone said something costs 70 times as much. How's the wine that costs one pound or the wine that costs 70 pounds? You'd hope that the wine that costs 70 pounds is noticeably better. Otherwise, what on earth's going on? One of the numbers that you might really care about is if you 10x the amount of compute that goes into it, what happens to your, your revenues? Do users pay you 10 times as much money for that product? If though, it's the case that when you put in 10 times as much training, you only get five times as much revenue. The companies might no longer be able to fund these things. Of course, they're funded by venture capital that's based on predictions about the future. But the venture capital might dry up because people might realize that if you put in 10 times as many resources, you get five times as much benefit. That's not yeah. enough to keep going. So it remains to be seen how that kind of thing is going to scale.